Well, here we are again. This is Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. I would suggest right now, if you want to get the crux of this excerpt, that you uh, pause right now, get your pen and a pad or a pencil and a paper, and write along as we talk about this. I'm using a Dake Bible, a D-A-K-E, written, put together by J. Phineas Dake. It's probably the most exhaustive Bible that is out on the market today. I have several of them. Well, you say, why would you have several of them? Because I wear them out. I actually study them. I actually went to school, and the school I went to, I used this Bible. But this Bible has been read from cover to cover. It has been marked from cover to cover. Every page in it has been underlined, fulfilled, and been studied. And why? Because if we want to know God's Word, we need to know it. When you get saved, you need to get in God's book. I know many people that are saved today, claim to be saved, that have never read through the Bible, or they've never read very much of the Bible at all, and they've never studied it. But the Bible is a book to be studied. We're going to look at some things. The statistics of this book is it's the 45th book of God's Word. The 45th book, imagine. And it has 16 chapters in it. It's not a, a real long book in the sense of the word. It only has 433 verses in it. And it has 87 questions. It has 19 Old Testament prophecies, four new prophecies, and 388 verses of history. It has 29 verses of fulfilled and 16 verses of unfulfilled prophecy. It, it, it proves its own self. If you get in the book of Romans, it proves its own self. The content of it goes back into the rest of all of the books, goes forward to the rest of the books. This is the 45th, and there are 66 books. From this book on, the Bible changes. It gives us the way of Christianity. The what is Christianity? Christianity is a bunch of people following Christ-like ways. And Christ came and walked on this earth in the flesh. God in the flesh, if you please. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, all three. You remember when he got baptized by John. The heavens opened up and the Father said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. The, the date and the place of it was Paul, the apostle, who was originally the uh, persecutor of the church. He wrote these letters, and they were written in Corinth about 58 to 60 A.D. He sent to Rome by a woman. Her name was Phoebe. I thought that was interesting, very interesting to me that he sent them because he was persecuted and he was people were after him and they would have never probably ever suspected him to send something so valuable by a woman. Romans 16 and 1 tells us the author Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles, you and I, the majority of people watching uh, PH tidbits are Gentile people. And he's and Paul the Apostle is the one that gave us the gospel. His original name was Saul. He was persecuting the Christians, Acts 8 and 1, 9 and 1, 13 and 9. He was a Benjamite, born in Tarsus, Asia Minor, which is in Rome, uh, and uh, right outside of Rome. And Romans 11 and 1, Philippians uh, 3 and 5, Acts 9 and 11, Acts 21 and 39, 22 and 13 and 3. He, uh, a phrase, he was educated, a Pharisee. He was a Pharisee, educated at Jerusalem, Acts 22 and 3. He said under a fellow by the name of Gamil. And he was a Pharisee of Pharisees, but he also was a Roman citizen which gave him an upper hand in that area, that he could claim Roman citizenship. Acts 16, 37, 22, 25, he was born in uh, Tarsus. Uh, uh, his, uh, 
he was uh, the curator of Christianity. In other words, he started going across the country proclaiming Christianity, Acts 7, 58, 8, 1, 9, 1, and 22, and 4. Galatians 1 and 13, Philippians 3 and 6, 1 Timothy 1 and 13. Converted to Christ, Acts 9, 1 through 17. Becoming a preacher and a writer of the gospel and giving our clearest concept of Christianity, Acts 9, 19 through 29, and Galatians 1, 11, 2 and 1, 2 Peter 3 and 15. For his history, see Acts chapter 8 and 28, and his epistle, he wrote 14 epistles, Romans through Hebrews. Let me tell you a little something. I was a Saul. I was a persecutor of Christians. I was from the state of Maine, which I'm going up there next week to visit, and it hasn't changed. Not a bit. It's got worse. Uh, if you want to be a, a persecuted Christian, you go and mention the name Jesus Christ in the average place in the state of Maine. You will be a persecuted Christian. <laughs> and so I'm headed into that next week, and I'm going to try some of it out. Now, Roman is the first in order of the epistles. What are the epistles? These are the books in the New Testament that were written to the people. They were doctrinally in, in uh, the canonical order. There is a canon in, in over there in Israel that has a canonical order, and they were put in order, rightly so, for it contains the ABCs of Christianity. If you are not interested in studying the book of Romans, you may not be interested in living a fulfilled Christian life. Because this is where it all starts. Right here in the book of Romans. If you want to live a Christian life. You need it un until its lessons are learned. You are ignorant of Christian principles. If you haven't learned what Romans says, you are ignorant of Christian principles. It is the very foundation of of the church's teaching. And if we are wrong in understanding here, we shall be wrong everywhere else. Wow. So it's so important that you understand the book of Romans. The great theme is the revelation of God and the wrath against sin. And the righteousness through faith as the grounds of justification. What is justification? Just as if I never sinned. I was like Paul the Apostle. I wasn't literally killing people physically, but I killed them with my tongue. If I found out they were a Christian, I'd cuss them, their father, and their mother, and their sister, and their brother, and everybody else before I got saved. Romans makes the whole world guilty before God in need of salvation. How do you get it? through Jesus Christ. The uh, prominent future is the long doctrinal section. Listen to this. Chapter 1, 16 through 8 and 39. Those are detrimental that you read those and understand them. God's method of dealing with Jews and with Gentiles individually is uh, pictured in this doctrinal section. The reason why, at this period of time, Jews were God's chosen people. Gentiles were just being grafted in then. And now, this Christianity is predominantly a Gentile. And who is a Gentile? Anybody who's not a Jew is a Gentile. Well, I'm an American. If I was Chinese, I'd be a Gentile. If I was Japanese, I'd be a Gentile. If I was German, I'd be a Gentile. If you're not a Jew, you are a Gentile. And their relationship in the dis, uh, 
dispensationally is given 9 1 through 11 36. The rest of the, the book, 12 1 through 16 27, is practical, showing the results of salvation. Now, I'm going to be, uh, have to do, I'm going to do 20 minute seg segments on this, and I'll probably be doing three or four, maybe even five of them. But as we come in to salvation, salvation is used as deliverance from danger, Exodus 14. Now, this was back in the day of the Israelites being in the wilderness. And then the victory over the enemies in 1 Samuel 14. Healing of the body, Acts 3 and 6, 4 and 12. You need uh, to go ahead and pause if you want to write these down. Forgiveness of sin is Luke 19 and 9. Romans 10, 9 and 10. Psalm 38, 18 through... You say, who wrote all this? Paul the Apostle penned down the places that he wanted us to know from the Old Testament. He wrote, penned them down in the book of Romans. And he tells us to look at deliverance from captivity, Psalm 14. Deliverance from wrath, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 9. Now we come to a total new matter. This was talking about bodily. Now we're going to salvation. This is from sin that comes through. Listen, salvation means that you're a saved forever, that your body, soul, and spirit are saved. The body will go to the grave, and you will get a new body, and, and but your soul and spirit will be the same when you get to heaven. We're going to be known in heaven as we're known on the earth, but we're going to have a new body. And this old body is corrupt. Now we see confession, Romans 10 and 9. If thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thine heart, God raised him from the dead, then you can understand this book. If you do not do that, you cannot understand this book. If you are not a Christian, until you ask Jesus, forgive you of your sin, come in your heart and save your soul, you cannot understand this book. This is a book for Christians, Christians only. Grace through faith, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Sanctification. That is separating ourselves to the Spirit of God. We are sanctified by the Spirit of God out of this world. Belief in the truth, 1 Thessalonians uh, 2 and 13. A godly sorrow, 2 Corinthians 7 and 10. Faith in His blood, Romans 3 and 25. Faith in His name. The name is Jesus Christ. And the faith we have is that He died on the cross as God in the flesh, shed His blood, the human blood He had, on the earth. He went down into the heart of the earth. He walked through. He preached to those in paradise. He preached to those that were captive in hell already. And He uh, came back up. He picked up his blood in a basin. He told the disciples and all those that were with him, wait for a little bit, that he must go to the Father. He carried his blood up there, and he put it, sprinkled it on the mercy seat at the Father God, and then he had the right to sit back down beside the Father. And he could sit back on the throne of God, on the right hand of God where he sits today. He is the eternal authority of Christianity. He's the eternal authority of eternal life. If you have not Jesus in your heart, you have not eternal life. The only way you can have eternal life is to say, God, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and save my soul. And Jesus will come in your heart. He will save your soul. Now, if we go in, there, the next section in Romans that we had here was there were 20 stages of the word apostasy in Romans 1. What is apostasy? That's saying, Jesus come into my heart and save my soul, and you go to church, and you start following the Lord, and then you leave out of the church. You are considered an apostate. 
you are in apostasy from what you asked Jesus to do and to come in your heart. Are you still saved? If you were truly saved, you are still saved. You cannot be lost. You can commit all kinds of sins, all the way to murder, crime, sex sins, all kinds of things, and still be saved. But you will be chastised for those sins. What do you think AIDS is? It's a chastisement for the sin of different types of sexual sins. You get AIDS. And so God has got things on this world to keep you corrected from doing those things that are sin. They're opposite of what the Bible said. They're opposite of what God says. And because of that, we have great problems in the world today. We have more people in hospitals today than we have in schools. Why? They are in school in the hospital. When you're in the hospital, check yourself out. Why are you there? Are you there because you disobeyed God and the fact to separate yourself from the world from one of the things called smoking? And you didn't separate yourself and now you have a lung disease or you have emphysema or you have cancer. You have something from your disobedience. Now disobedience is going to bring on a penalty. There's a penalty for doing good which is a good penalty. There's a penalty for doing evil, which is a bad penalty. And we can witness those. That is the law of not dynamics, but it's the law of Christianity and being lost. And so there is a law in sin that you will have a penalty. Sin brings forth penalty. Now, how do you instantly take care of that penalty? Because our time is short right here. I'm going to say John 3.16. For God so loved this world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you will say today, if you've never done it, Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and save my soul. And give me the ability to be able to look at this word, to study it, and to understand it. He will do that for you, just like he did for me. Now, I've been in the Word for 40 years. The first thing I did when I got saved, and you could do it too. Nowadays, we have many, many mediums different than I had. The only thing I had was record, Bible on record. So I got a Bible out, not this one. I have several that are marked all the way through. I got one out, a big family Bible. I bought at a store up the road for five bucks. And I brought it home, and I opened it up to Genesis 1-1. And I put the record on, Genesis 1-1. And I underlined that Bible as I listened and read along. I learned how to read. I didn't know how to read. So I learned how to read. And I still have a problem with reading. But that's how I learned how to read. And since then, I've been through the Bible before, a time or two. And we must go through the Bible. We can go through the Bible every year. I'm not saying you need to do that right now. What you need to do right now is get started on what's called the Romans Road and listen to what God has to say to you if you want to be saved and follow God in your life. Let's open one of these little tracks. And it starts out with the wages of sin is death, Romans 6.23. Romans 3.23 said, God's word is clear. All mankind has sinned. Everybody has sinned. And then we see the third thing. But God commended his love to us while, we, while I was a drunk, heathen, cussing Christians, swearing, doing everything, stealing, lying, cheating. God saw fit to save my wretched soul. 6 and 23 says it's a gift of God, not of works, as any man should boast. Salvation is possible only through Jesus. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I'm saying to you today, you need to call on the Lord. Make sure that you're in. Make sure that you have called on him properly. And then you can start to understand his word. Because he's the one that gives you the understanding. Well, our time has come and gone. We'll see you next time. I'm going to be the next few excerpts in Romans and, and speaking about Paul the Apostle, who was Saul. Now he has a godly name, 
which is Paul. And see you next time. Bye-bye.